Hello everyone, Father Jared coming to you. What is truth? And this is a question that Puncher's Pilate raises after he comes in and questions Jesus about who he is and where he's from. And Jesus, you know, states that he ha he's not of this world and that he has come, and that he is truth. And he comes to witness to the truth. And Pilate responds, what is truth? And of course, we have a benefit that Pontius Pilate didn't, then that we have the Gospels preceding this to read from. So in Jesus' life, at one other point, he states that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. So the truth is a person. And I th what exactly does that mean? Why is it important? Well, because I think sometimes we think of the truth as something that we simply wield, something that we use to either, you know, to bludgeon our enemies or to stand upon higher ground, so to speak. But really the truth is a person. It's, it's something to be discovered. It's something to be enriched. And it's something to be, to encounter and to be ultimately loved by. Because the truth leads to love and the love, and love leads to truth. And so whenever we talk about truth and we cannot speak about truth separate from Jesus, because he is a person, he's real, he's existent. He wants to be in relationship with you, with me, with all of us. He wants to be in union with us. And so whenever we speak about the truth, you know, I think there's like two extremes. Sometimes we can treat maybe the truth as a person. So Jesus as a person, kind of like a stat sheet, like, you know, like I can, you know, say whatever, you know, like, Pokey Reese averaged this in 2002 for the Cincinnati Reds, or Roger Clemens had this ERA in 1995, or, you know, Nolan Ryan struck out this many people. Like, so we can kind of like read Jesus in this kind of like list of truths that come with our Catholic faith, which are important to know as just simply something on a stat sheet to be used to, in reference to win an argument, or to simply kind of, um, build up our own position, so to speak. And so that causes a great danger because then the per we lose the person. We kind of lose, you know, like, again, to go back to the example of like Nolan Ryan, we kind of lose that this was a man who pitched well into his 40s and just like the tough guy kind of mentality that he had. And um, and even one of my favorite moments in bi baseball history, which I wasn't even alive for, but I've seen clips of, of him um, getting into a fight with Jesse Ventura. Uh, is just, um, yeah, there's like so much to more to the man than just what his stat line says and why he was a great baseball player. Even there's even more to that than just simply what the stats tell us. And so it's important for us to remember to not like just simply limit the truth to something on the page, but something that has an impact, something that we can have a relationship, something we can deepen our knowledge of and come to a greater knowledge of why it is the truth by entering into a relationship with Jesus. So Jesus helps to show us the truth, and the truth helps to show us Jesus. So the stats can't help us to show something, so to speak, about the person. But if we divorce it from the person and just simply list the stats, then we lose so much of what we could gain by simply looking at those things. And that's the same way with Jesus, that whenever we just look at him as, well, he said this or that, we fail to meet, like and I do this all the time, like I fail to see the fullness of who he is as a person, that he loves me, that he loves you that he loves, the people that we don't like, and that he wants to be in relationship with them too, and that he wants to encounter them in truth, not because he wants to simply be right, but because he wants to be in relationship, he wants to be friends with them, he wants to save them, he wants to grant them salvation. And then I think we can go to another extreme, you know, so it's kind of like we can believe falsehoods about the people around us, you know, so, <laughs> you know, like I guess an example in what I'm going to try to use in our everyday life would be like that, you know, like Jesus as a person, the truth as a person, we can believe falsehoods about a person. So we can hear that, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I think one of the, like something that can sometimes happen is we can say, oh, I heard this person speak one time and I didn't like what they had to say for whatever reason. They sound a little harsher than I liked or they said this and I don't really like that. And so then we just kind of judge the person 
off of something that's not even necessarily true about them. And so we begin to hold them again. And that can happen sometimes with, with our Lord in kind of two different ways. Like one, he was this harsh, militant figure that was, you know, that was just, that came to just bash all these different groups of people. You know, that's sometimes a narrative you can hear. But then you can also hear another narrative that's like, oh, Jesus is just all about love and he just wants us to accept everybody. And it's like, well, that misses a good part of his person as well. Not that obviously he wants to accept somebody, but he accepts people on his terms. He does tell them, you know, he does tell us in like in Matthew 25 that, you know, where he says, you know, like, uh, where he separates the sheep from the goats, he does say, depart from me, you evildoers. And so he clearly says the different points. He clearly condemns the Pharisees. He clearly even condemns his own disciples. We see him a couple weeks ago in the gospel. We see him tell Peter to get behind him, Satan. He, the man that he just called Peter, the rock, the man of faith, in the very next, like a few lines later, is calling him Satan. Like clearly Jesus did not have, you know, much, he, he, he clearly didn't have much of a qualm with calling people out. And so I think we can kind of go two ways. Like we can make him totally that, as somebody who just called out, called out, called out, and was always right. Or we can go like in this direction of like pure, pure acceptance with no conditions whatsoever set upon him. And both of those miss the wholeness, the truth of the person, the person that is truth, the relationship that we are to have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that he wants to have with each and every one of us. And so, as it so often is, as Aristotle identified many, many, many uh, centuries ago, I believe five centuries before Christ even, so 2,500 years ago, identified that key to virtue is found within the mean. And what he means is like the place in between two, what ultimately are vices oftentimes, two things on the opposite end of the spectrum. So, for example, with you know, with courage, with the virtue of courage, which is a good thing, there's actually not just cowardice. Obviously, we probably know that cowardice is opposed to the virtue of courage. So that's one part of that. But on the other side of it, there's also the, the, the vice, I mean, the vice of cowardice as opposed to the virtue of courage. And then the other end of the spectrum, you have ultimately foolhardiness. So that's kind of a, a foolishness, a misconceived what misconceived notion of courage whether it's due to our pride that we think we can win every single situation like that um, or whether it's because of just like a sort of sadistic nihilism that we accept that it's that kind of fate but instead courage is found between those two extremes that courage acknowledges both that we can't simply back down from every single fight but then you know courage also acknowledges that we can't be foolhardy and we can't fight every single battle. It's not prudent for us to be involved in every single thing. And so courage is really this, this virtue that's found in between those two extremes of vices. And where they kind of exist for different people is, is actually quite different. And we can see that throughout scripture we have and throughout you know the history of the church. We have saints and Old Testament characters that are soldiers, but then we also have saints that are martyrs. And you know, those two things are actually quite different in the way that they would have approached opposition. And so there's quite a bit of discernment and prayerfulness and getting to know Jesus that helps us to then learn those virtues, helps us to learn who he is, and also helps us to learn what the truth is and how it actually operates in our experience. Not just merely as a letter on a page and not something simply to be discarded whenever it seems convenient for us. And so whenever it comes to practicing our faith, whenever it comes to us looking for the Lord, it is really, really important for us to remember, or looking for the truth, sorry, and looking for the Lord too, to remember that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is a person. He is someone we are called to be in relationship with. He is somebody who is, can give a, and bestow upon us the gift of peace, the gift of love, like just so many good, good, good things that he can bestow upon us. He is ultimately the one, the truth, who can set us free from our sins of bondage, of lies, 
And so let us continue to strive to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, to see him and him the truth that's been communicated through his words in the gospel, continue to be communicated through his church. And with that, I hope that each and every one of you have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you later. God bless.